Welcome back to another episode of the Anxious Creative Podcast. I am so glad you're here and you're in for one good episode today because I am talking about anxiety. Now, duh, don't I always talk about anxiety? Yes, I share everything from the lens of an anxious creative, but this week we are battling into when anxiety's already started, when that snowball effect's gone, when your pits are sweat stained like crazy and you can't seem to recover. I'm going to walk you through my three steps to help stop the panic once it started. I overthink, I overshare, and I overanalyze. So come explore with me as I chat about business, life, and relationships all through the lens of an anxious creative. All right, well, if you're new around here, you might not know, but you might be able to adventure a guess that I've struggled with anxiety most of my life. And I would say for the first... 30 years, I had no idea what anxiety was. And I started having panic attacks and I would shy away from certain situations and I'd feel like I'd get super weird in other situations. And I wouldn't realize like, why do I get to be this weird, quirky, awkward person in these certain scenarios? And it wasn't until I was probably about 32 years old that I realized, holy poop, this is anxiety. My heart's pounding out of my chest. I feel nervous for no reason. I get really worked up before certain situations. And I realize that part of it is not feeling in control, not knowing what to expect. I hate surprises with a passion. Do not ever try to surprise me as something fun to do. I don't like it. I remember the first, let me, let me back up for a second. I remember when I was 20 years old, I was dating this guy and I had hinted to him how I had always wanted a surprise birthday party my whole life. I thought surprise birthday parties were like the coolest thing ever. And so I hinted at it and then I came, here comes my birthday and I was hoping he'd like do something big. And he's like, do you have any plans? And I was like, no, it's it's like, it's my birthday. You're supposed to have plans. And he's like, oh, okay. Well, like, do you want to just like go get dessert? And I felt so disappointed. And so then he's like, well, let's just like swing by my house and I have to pick something up. And so we went over there and we're walking up and I didn't see that he like rang the doorbell before we walked in. And I guess that was the sign to everyone inside. So he being a student, he lived in a basement suite and we walked in and I walked down the stairs and everyone was like, surprise. And like people threw pillows at me. And I remember just feeling stunned. It's everything I wanted. I thought that a surprise birthday party would be like the coolest thing ever. And I remember just being like shook. I don't know if that, I feel like that's like what young people say. And I don't know if I use that right. But I remember just being like in shock. And then like later on in the evening, trying to have a conversation with someone and not being able to focus and still just recovering from the surprise. And it wasn't until years later that I looked back on that situation and I realized, holy crap, I was having a panic attack I was taken by surprise. I didn't feel in control and I didn't know how to respond to the situation at hand. And looking back, I'm like, okay, like surprises, not so much a good idea for this girl. Um, but realizing that, okay, I don't like to be taken by surprise. I like to know what to expect. Um, and how I felt like I was in a fog the rest for the rest of that night and not really understanding at the time, like what is going on. But hindsight, I was like, I was having, it was kind of like that anxiety had started. And even though I knew, even though I knew I was in a safe and comfortable environment amongst friends, because that snowball effect had started and I had no idea how to even recognize what it was, um, distinguish it, like go to the bathroom, take some deep breaths, calm myself down because I didn't know any of that stuff. It just kept building, although I was totally fine and I was kind of over the shock and surprise, the anxiety and the panic continued to be there. And so it wasn't until years later that when I first started, it's it's all around dating people. I do have a lot of anxiety in and out of my personal life, but all these stories are going back to my dating life, which is not something I talk a lot about. But it wasn't until years later when I was first dating Nick that I was, we were doing long distance between um, two different cities and I would have to fly back and forth every four weeks so that we could see each other because our schedules were so crazy. And so anyway, not that you needed to know that part. I remember talking to my therapist once about, you know, I'd been through, I'd recently been divorced and I had another failed relationship. And I was telling her about how like I'd get, I'd arrive here to come visit him and I'd get off the plane and I'd be so excited. And I'd rush to like, I'd rush out the plane and walk and get my bag and like go see him. And I'd tell her like, it's so weird because 
like I'll get in the car and we'll catch up and we're talking, but I like, I'm like this spinny version of myself and I like can't shut up and I keep talking and I can't seem to control myself. And I feel like I'm just not fully present. And she's like, okay, it sounds like you're like really worked up about it. And I'm realizing that like the anxiety I always have associated with negative feelings, but anxiety and like panic attack can also Um, show up in my life in forms of when I'm really excited about something and I kind of lose control and I don't stay grounded. I'm the kind of person now, if you're watching this video instead of, if you didn't know, you can also watch my podcast on my website at donbradley.com or find it on YouTube um, under Don Bradley hair. But if you're watching this, you'll see, but if you're not, I'll try to explain like, I kind of live above myself. I'm kind of like this like spinny person that like lives in the ether ether is that the right word I kind of need I need to do um I need to practice like being more grounded and being more like okay like my feet are on the floor I can feel roots going through them like you know those yeah yoga stuff and so intense excitement can also cause similar responses in my body as anxiety And so she told me to get off the plane and she's like, don't just start beelining it. Like what I can get, what I can do is I can often get so focused and I know you struggle with this too. I can get so focused on something that's ahead that I speed through everything else and I don't take the time to slow down and it can cause this like spiral effect in me. So she's like, I want you to get off the plane and when you get off the tarmac and you get inside the airport, I want you to step aside and let everyone pass you. And I want you to take a deep breath and I want you to look at the ceiling, the walls, and the floor. And I want you to start walking and I want you to feel each foot touch the ground and really feel it. And then the ceiling, the walls, and the floor. And like, because I get tunnel vision, especially if if my anxiety is around something negative or I'm nervous or I'm scared or I'm thinking worst case scenario, like the tunnel vision's real. But even I realized in that scenario where I was really excited it was happening in the same way of tunnel vision. Like I'm so excited to see him. I can't wait to hang out. Like we haven't seen each other in a month, like all this stuff. And so doing that, I remember the first time was so hard. I remember being like, no, I just, I just like, it was like, I had to like hold my, like this other person of me had to hold myself back. I'm like, I just want to, I just want to get into the routine that I'm in. And that's the thing with anxiety is a lot of times we get, although we don't want to feel it, we get really comfortable with the feeling of it. It's what we're used to. We're used to feeling it. We're used to experiencing it. And so although we want to create the calmness, we don't know what to do when we feel the calmness. We feel like, oh, is something wrong? I'm waiting for other sh- the shoe to- other shoe to drop. Like, I don't know why this is all happening. Why do I feel so good? And why is everything okay? I need to feel panicked. And I realized like, I heard, read somewhere someone said like, if you, I don't know if I grew up feeling panicky or if there was, you know, maybe I got to dive deeper into my childhood stuff, but sometimes this stuff becomes what is known. And what is when it's, when it's known, it's kind of like what feels safe, even though it doesn't feel safe. I'm no therapist. Quote me on that. Um, but realizing like when you are used to these feelings being routine in your life, Although you don't want them, you find comfort in them. And that was like a real like, oh, interesting moment for me. And so as I slowed myself down in the airport and like felt my feet touch the like heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, ceiling, walls. It's like the, how, what's that song? I'm going to get it so wrong. To the windows, to the walls. And everyone's joking about it during coronavirus. Anyway trying to like come up with a pattern and slow myself down. And that first time I did it, I could feel like my heart was racing and trying to get my body to race up to it as well. But it actually, my body slowed my heart down and it was like, it it was a calming effect. And I showed up and I was present because what anxiety often is for many people is like trying to jump ahead to the future, trying to figure out what happens next before it happens rather than just being present. And what my, what I didn't realize what my therapist was doing was getting me to practice being in the moment, feeling my feet on the floor, touching at each, every step, every step, seeing the ceiling and the walls and the floor around me then rather than focusing on the end of the hallway. Rather than for me, like to feel my feet, to feel my breath, rather than thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to see him once I get through those doors. And so just being present and oh my gosh, I have such a hard time still being present. When I get really excited, I'm not present. I'm like, oh, this can be this next. 
but also when I'm nervous, oh my goodness, what's going to happen next? And trying to remain in the moment is something I continually have to practice. So once I started practice being, pra- bleh, 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 bleh. do you guys love when I mess up on this stuff? When I pra- started practicing being more present in every situation and allowing myself time to calm down or to figure out what they were thinking instead of just <sighs> taking a breath and giving myself some time. So <clears throat> I wanted to share with you the three, three, three rule of stopping anxiety once it's started. Because yeah, it's great to know how to know if anxiety is coming on or how to avoid it. But the reality is, is you're going to experience it at some point or another. And I, and it's going to, it's going to onset. And I want to be able to help you with that. So the three, three, three rule, this is really, really fun and easy to apply. And if you've got a piece of paper and a pen right now, write it down and put it on a post-it note. I actually have it on a post-it note right here for me. Um, but it's something that I like to remember. So the three, three, three rule, you want to look for three things you can see and name them to yourself. So like I was saying how my therapist would say, look at the ceiling, the walls and the floor, just like you just look for three things around you. Like I could say right now, right now I see my camera, I see my glasses and I see my water bottle. And you know, you don't necessarily have to say it out loud, but if you can, that's great. So see three things and then hear three things. Where are you and what can you hear? So right now I can hear the air vent in my house. I can hear myself talking and I can hear the birds outside. And what this is doing is it's igniting your senses and bringing you into the present moment. And then the last three is move three things. So I'm moving my hand, I'm blinking my eyes and I'm wiggling my toes and then just take some breaths. But remember three, 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 see three things, hear three things and move three things and go slow. I can't stress that part enough. I know like normally when I get really excited, I start talking like this and then I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm like, what is this? And And you've probably actually heard me like that on the podcast before. But if you can learn to slow down and just keep doing the three, three, three over and try to get a pattern and get methodical and help it be therapeutic. What can I see? See three things, my light, my backpack, my computer hear three things, the car door shutting outside, Nick upstairs, the sound of my own breath, move three things, stretch my neck, twist my shoulders, move my ankles. And if you're, you should feel calmer already. And I really encourage you to do this as, as you're listening to this podcast. See three things right now hear three things right now and move three things right now. And you might even feel calmer already. You might not have realized that you were actually carrying some of that anxiety because us anxious creatives, we carry it around with us more than we realize. Lots of times we think a panic attack is when we feel anxiety, but you don't realize that weight on your chest and that tightness that you've, you're carrying around all the time. And so when you can start doing this, even start getting in the habit of doing this first thing in the morning when you wake up. What a great practice. See three things around you as you wake up. Hear three things around you. Move three things around you. But if you're in the middle of one of those panic attacks at the moment, keep doing this over and over. Get slow. I know I'm being repetitive, but I really want to hound this in for you. This is going to help once that snowball effect has already started and it's going to help you kind of slow it down regroup yourself and be able to move forward more calmly. So I hope that's helped you. I know I use the examples, like kind of weird examples um, of my dating life, but surprise parties for us anxious, surprise anything for us anxious creatives, not so good of an idea all the time. And maybe you don't even realize that that's something for you. Maybe you had an aha moment during this podcast. You're like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I don't like being taken by surprise. And oh my goodness, like, yeah, that one moment that happened to me, um, I was totally anxiety and I was thrown off guard and I didn't realize 
realize I used to always joke about how I became this quirky, funny person in group situations. And then I realized, oh my goodness, it's social anxiety. Being with big groups of people causes me social anxiety. And I don't, because lots of times people think that when you become anxious, you separate yourself. I can get quiet, but I can also become this weird, quirky version of myself where I make jokes that are totally don't make sense and people kind of like look and cringe. And I always just thought that I was kind of a big goofball and I am, but this weird heightened sense of it came out in social scenarios. And I didn't realize for the longest time that I had social anxiety. How funny is that? to not even realize you have it. And so I hope this can inspire you to start being more aware of yourself and your surroundings, more aware of how you're feeling so that you can gain more control over your life and your business and your relationships. So if you related to this in any way whatsoever, I would love if you left a comment. If you love this episode, leave a review, subscribe, whether it's on iTunes, Spotify, or on YouTube so that you can get the latest updates. And you know what I would love even more is if you share this with your friends. I am on a mission, I guess, to help more anxious creatives. If I can help people bypass and get through some of the struggles that I've been through, all the better. And so know that I would love for you to share this episode with a friend, subscribe wherever you can, whether it's YouTube, and more than anything, take the time to do this exercise. And if you do, once again, I said leave a comment, but hit me up on Instagram, at Don Bradley Hair. Shoot me a DM. I would love to hear how this episode has helped you, if it helped you move forward in some some things, and how you're going to move forward with your anxiety. So congratulations for getting through this. Sometimes these episodes are hard to hear and hard to listen to because it means facing some of the stuff that we're going through. So congrats to you, friend, for showing up today, for listening in. As always, it's a pleasure to spend this time with you, and I will see you next week.